oh, didn't see you there. I was too busy just, you know, thinking about all the free time I have. You caught me um, a mid-morning contemplation with my homegrown tea and all the free time you could possibly have in the world. <laughs> oh my God. We'll see if I use any of that. Can we just like admire my sleeves? Look how freaking cute. Hi everyone, my name is M Hags R, and in today's video, we are talking about something extra juicy. We're talking about how to balance full-time work with your art, the eternal struggle that we all face. We follow these artists on social media, right? And we're like, wow, how do they make so much? How do they constantly post on social media? How are they constantly doing all these things? And da 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 da. Well, I have a reality check for you all that I'm sure maybe you've realized, but you need to remind yourself, like I constantly have to remind myself, these people are full-time artists. They have the time because it is their job. We don't have the time because it's not our job. If you're watching this and you are a full-time artist, hi, I don't know why you're here, but thank you so much for joining. If you are like me, uh, hi, I'm a full-time employee. My job is not artistic at all. Uh, I will say it has some creative elements, which is why I went into the field that I went into. I wouldn't say it's artistic in any way, and that's okay. Cause then I have my full artistic brain to still use when I want on my artistic hobbies. When I want is maybe a loose way to put it, right? Because that's when you have the time, the energy, the motivation. You're working your probably 40 hour a week job, maybe even more than that. I know I work a lot more than a lot of times. I work very weird hours sometimes. So I'm sometimes coming home at like nine o'clock at night and the only thing I have energy to do is eat a meal, take a shower, and then go to bed. <laughs> or let's be real, doom scroll on my phone or binge watch a TV show I've seen a million times because no mental energy. <laughs> Especially if you're sitting in traffic like I do. Finding that balance between full-time work and your art, if you're trying to make it a side hustle, if you're trying to become a full-time artist is very difficult, right? But I'm speaking a little more about how to just balance it because obviously I don't know how to become a full-time artist. I can't give advice on that type of thing because I don't do that. Um, but I can speak a little bit about how I've balanced my 40 plus hour work week, my commuting two hours a day, sometimes more than that, uh, having weird hours sometimes because a lot of times I have to work late for events and things. I work weekends a lot for events and things. And I also have a social life and other things. I have other hobbies. I try to eat well and exercise and bathe <laughs> and see my family and friends and all those things, right, that comprise your life. So how do you balance all that while also trying to make art? Whether you're trying to transition into that, into a side hustle, small business, whatever it may be, or you're just trying to create art and you just don't even know how to find the time. Here's hopefully some things that can help you do so. My first piece of advice on how to balance your full-time job with making art is work smaller. This sketchbook, I don't wanna say it's changed my life, <laughs> cause that might be a little drastic, but it has definitely changed a lot. In this sketchbook, I don't sketch, which I know sounds counterintuitive. I just go straight to line art and then obviously coloring. It kind of helps you let go of perfectionism. It is quite small, as you can see. I believe this is a, actually I could tell you in three seconds. So it's about three and a quarter by five and a half. But when you work small like this, it is a lot quicker to produce a finished piece. So each of these pieces in here, also keep in mind the fact that I don't sketch them out first, so that eliminates a whole step, is probably ranging from like, I'd say on average, two to four hours on each one. Which for me, as someone who I feel like I'm a, like a slow artist, is pretty quick. So again, when you're low on time because you're working so much, because you're commuting, you're, because you're having a life, because you're taking care of yourself. When you work smaller like this, it's easier to produce a finished piece. It's quicker to produce a finished piece. So you will have more output. It's sometimes better to actually produce more 
and some of that work be shitty, <laughs> then to produce less and everything looks amazing. Because the more you're producing, the more you're practicing, the more you're adding to your mental library, the more you're learning from your mistakes. Whether you want to work smaller by having a smaller notebook, that I think helps kind of remind your brain as you're drawing, oh, I'm drawing in a small notebook, I have to draw small. Or you can work in a larger sketchbook and just do smaller drawings within the larger and then maybe do more drawings per page. Advice number two for how to balance your full-time job and your art. Follow other smaller artists and part-time artists so that you avoid comparing yourself to full-time artists. So if you find yourself following a lot of full-time artists and they're again cranking out content like either on Instagram every single day or YouTube, maybe they're doing a YouTube video a week or something like that. If you're really someone who puts a detriment to your own self-esteem by comparing yourself to others, it might be hard time to look through your followers and subscriptions and unfollow people that you actually find negatively impact you in that way because you're just constantly comparing yourself to them and thinking, why aren't I making as much as them? They make so much or their skills have improved so much or they're just so much further along in their journey than I am. Again, just follow more smaller artists that are on your level so you can see people who are actually more on the same journey as you so that you're not comparing yourself to an unrealistic expectation. Also, when you follow other smaller artists, you can more likely build a mutual connection with them. These larger artists, uh, they constantly have people reaching out to them, commenting and things like that. So it's a little harder to break through the cracks and build an actual connection with them. That's a generalization. I apologize if that's not true, but that's just how I maybe view it from the outside where smaller artists, like they maybe only get a couple of comments a week, <laughs> if that. When you comment on things of theirs, you'll stand out because they're not used to getting that as much and it'll be much easier for you to build a mutual connection with them and you can actually build some real community and support each other, so that's nice. Point number three, it is okay to choose to focus on one thing at a time. And I say that in terms of either subject or social media platform. So with your limited time as a full-time worker who does not work full-time in art, I think it's totally valid for you to just focus on one platform at a time because who has the freaking time to learn multiple platforms to really dedicate yourself to multiple platforms like it's so much it is so much to just manage one account never mind like five if you try to do all the major social medias right so picking one thing to truly focus your time and energy on i think is actually going to serve you more in the long run not only because you'll be able to build that following uh on that specific social media hopefully faster again building that community there but also like for your sanity and your mental health <laughs> which a lot of this is related to now choosing to focus on one thing at a time can also apply to your subject matter or what you're drawing. So I used to focus a lot on drawing people and that wasn't intentionally, I like drawing people. I think it was mainly because I really enjoyed drawing fan art as a lot of people I think start out and aren't doing. But I always kind of dreamed of doing landscapes and things one day. I just never thought I'd be good enough. Just goes to show if you practice and focus on certain things, you actually can do it. Going back to my little handy dandy notebook, I for some reason got really obsessed with drawing houses this year. I focused a lot on that and in that too, it's fun because I also still get to draw some nature elements. I've also transitioned to focusing primarily on alcohol markers just because they are so easy, there's no cleanup, there's no mess. And again, when you are short on time because you are constantly working, don't feel guilty about also focusing on a medium that is easy for you. If you are traditionally someone who wants to oil paint, but you just don't have the time to break out all the oils and like the mediums that you need to work with oils and like the fact that it needs to dry for forever and all this shit, right? If you don't have the time for that because of you working full time, 
don't feel guilty to put oils on a break and focus on something else. Like maybe you transition to acrylics because they're a little easier. Or if you're just like painting in general takes forever because that's where I'm at. I'm like, I love to paint. I'm really sad I don't get to paint more, but I've just had to compromise. And also I really enjoy using alcohol markers. I think they're really fun. So the fact that I enjoy them a lot and they're just a lot easier to use and less time sucking. <laughs> Uh, is the reason I've transitioned to using them a lot more. Summary of that point is you can choose to focus on one thing at a time, whether it be social media, what you're drawing, and the type of medium that you're using because you can always go back to those other things. This is actually a really good segue into the next point, which is it's okay to do simple things and bigger pieces on rarer occasions. Like I know for myself, by the time I get home, eat, shower, do whatever else I need to do, by the time I like sit down and I'm like done with all that, it might be like 8 p.m. already. And if I'm trying to go to bed at a decent hour, let's say like 10 o'clock, then I have maybe eight to 10 available to do art. I want to just sit on the couch and relax watching TV or something like that. And then I might pull this little guy out and start doing the next doodle or whatever while I'm sitting on the couch. These are the simple things I do in those windows of time where you have that half hour, hour. The times where I have the weekends, um, where I'm hopefully not working as much, if you don't have a traditional schedule and you just have your days off or whatever, this is where you can maybe plan for bigger pieces. For myself, I generally usually use those bigger windows of time that I have available on the weekends to create a YouTube video. Find your windows of time based on your schedule. When you have the small windows of time, be okay with just doing small simple things and then save the bigger chunks of time that you have on your days off or at night or whatever it may be based on your schedule uh for those bigger pieces or your bigger content creation that you want to work on i mean who has a whole weekend day available i know i hardly ever do <laughs> but let's say you know you're not hanging out with your friends until 5 p.m okay that means you have all morning to work on a painting even if it's like the night before, um, before you get into bed, putting all your paints out on your desk so it's ready to go the next day. And then that way when you wake up, maybe you need to do your little decompressed morning routine like I usually do. And then you can jump into like painting that bigger piece when you have that bigger chunk of time. So my final two points are kind of like vague existential, I won't lie to you. <laughs> if you watch a few of my videos at this point, you know I like getting vague and existential. This is just, this is classic me. So I think after you do some of the things that we talked about that are like more practical pieces of advice that I just gave, also reflecting on what you want out of your art and what you hope your art journey looks like is huge. Do you want to be a full-time artist? What is your goals with art, right? Maybe you don't want to be a full-time artist, but you'd still like to be a part-time artist or something like that. Maybe you want to just do commissions one day or open up an Etsy shop or be able to do comic cons or art markets or whatever it may be. Asking yourselves what specific goals you want. Do you want to illustrate children's books? Do you want to make a web comic. Like there's so many things you could possibly do with art. Maybe you wanna do those projects, but does that mean you need to be a full-time artist? Or are you making that time to work on those things in your spare time in addition to your job? And what does that look like? The reality is a lot of people won't be full-time artists. Like it's harsh, but it's true. I think so many more people dream of these bigger things and it just doesn't happen for people. But that's okay. The difference between having a dream and having goals. Like, how do you work towards those goals? And then the dream of becoming a full-time artist might become reality because of you achieving those goals. It's all about reflection. It's all about asking yourself, what do you really want? And also maybe facing a little bit of reality. The reality is probably gonna be that you are a full-time worker and a part-time artist or whatever for a very long time, possibly the rest of your life. And what does that look like for you and how do you balance that? And hopefully this video helps you reach a little more balance or gives you ideas of how to balance it better. So my final point now, after you've done some reflecting, is to remind you all that it's also okay to go through phases. I will also tell you from experience that there have been times where I don't make a lot of art. There was a period, I think it was like almost two years where I didn't do art at all. 
And that's okay. As artists, there's this constant pressure, again, when you're constantly also exposing yourself to social media, where there's a new picture of art every single day, that people are drawing every day or that you need to be drawing every day. Baloney, I freaking hate that advice. I, mm, it makes me so mad. It's really cheesy, but the only consistent thing in life is change. So you will go through phases. You will have times where you don't make a lot of art and that's okay. Like forgive yourself. If you, especially as someone who works full time, supports yourself, pays bills, pays rent, pays student loans, all these things, you're maybe struggling with your mental health. You maybe have family matters to be attending to. Maybe you're designating yourself a little more to your friendships, your relationships, whatever it may be. If you tell yourself that you need to draw every day, you are setting yourself up for failure <laughs> in this world, right? Where capitalism rules and we constantly have to put ourselves aside to just survive. I sometimes get sad that I have had these phases, that there are certain phases of my art that are done. But just looking back and remembering those times fondly and remembering that you can always return to them if you want, or just like keeping it as a phase, get nostalgic about it, that's okay. Move on to other things. I've moved on to alcohol markers, working in small sketchbooks, because that's what my brain and life can handle right now. Do what your brain and life can handle right now. <laughs> All those beginning points I made, work smaller size-wise, follow other smaller artists, choose to focus on one thing at a time. It's okay to do simple things, save your bigger chunks of time for your bigger pieces. Ask yourself, what do you really want out of your art? Do you actually wanna be a full-time artist? And remind yourself that you will go through phases and it is okay. I know I don't tell myself this enough, so I'm telling you as someone who's in the same boat, Go easy on yourself. You are doing enough. Do what you can handle and just enjoy making art when you can. That's what it comes down to. All my full-time worker people, I see you, I hear you. Please leave a comment um, with your stories, what you struggle with. And of course, if I have any advice I can try to offer, I'll do my best. Subscribe if you like the video, like the video. If you wanna leave a comment talking about your experiences, I'd love to hear from you all. Remember to go easy on yourself, find what works best for you, take care of yourself until next time. Thank you so much for watching, bye.